I'm feeling every one of my years. This is neither a complaint nor a lament. It's the God's honest truth. On this eve of a new year, I am more acutely aware than ever of the passage of time. Of course, I'm not alone in this. One of the most common responses to the coming of the High Holy Days, or a birthday, or an anniversary, or a child's or grandchild's celebration or milestone, one of the most common reactions we have to the aging process is how quickly it all recedes into memory. In this, I often feel as if I have stepped into the realm of cliché. How quickly the last year has gone by. The summer, where did it go? The kids are now so big, how did it all happen so quickly? The older I get, the younger everyone around me appears to be. The days and the years fly by. Life is a whirlwind. If the past year has flown by for you, be grateful. The last year has not sped by for all. For those who suffered months of illness or pain, it has been a long year. For those who lost someone dear, it has been a lonely year. For those who paced hospital corridors, who waited for a loved one to return, who looked for a job in vain, for these souls, the year did not fly by. It likely dragged. When your heart is aching, for what you know will never be again, a single night can feel interminable. But whether the year that draws now to a close, whether the year now receding into memory has sped by or crept by for you, it has become a part of who we are. We feel the years in our bones and in our kishkis. Its effects are etched upon our bodies and are inscribed upon our souls. I recently went to the doctor. Nothing serious, just a few kretzes. Gray hair now, a little bit doughy around the middle. Aches and pains in places where they did not exist before. A little less oomph. Nothing a few pills each day won't take care of. It seems that I have entered what Norwegian novelist Carl Nalsgaard refers to in the second book of his six-volume masterwork, My Struggle, as the middle of life. This is not in and of itself a chronological fact. After all, the phrase, the middle of life, is as much a comment on being in the midst of life as it is a reference to life's midpoint. That is, I, like so many of you, are now not only well advanced in life, but we are also surrounded and submerged by it. We live in the midst of life's minutia, what with our work and social networks and our families, perhaps a spouse or partner, children or grandchildren, parents and siblings, each wonderful, each with their own challenges and demands. Or if you remember the scene from the movie Zorba the Greek, when Zorba is asked if he's married, he responds, yes, I'm married, wife, children, house, job, everything, the whole catastrophe. <laughs> of course, it's not a catastrophe, this life of ours. Life is a blessing, but it is chaotic for sure. And in the middle of life, in the midst of our detailed and frenetic and overscheduled lives, the real struggle, the real struggle we have is how to take our daily experience, the quotidian and the mundane, how to take the everyday of our lives teeming with minutia and in it find and give to our days meaning. That is our task. This day and the next and in the year ahead to take the teeming minutia of life and find within it and bring to our lives its meaning. So I'm sitting at the optometrist recently. 
and I'm describing my experience with reading and with distance, and before I know it, I'm holding in my hands a prescription for multifocal lenses. <laughs> Bifocals. It's humbling. <laughs> and a new kind of acceptance and learning. After all, anyone who has ever worn bifocals knows that it takes time to learn how to shift between two perspectives, to say nothing of how we learn to combine these two perspectives into a single unified field of vision. And perhaps predictably, this has given rise to a term called bifocalism, which is in fact the ability to see the same situation from multiple perspectives. Bifocalism. Now this ability to see the world, the ability to see our own lives as if through bifocals, combining two perspectives into a single unified worldview, this is at the very heart of our High Holy Day experience. For we are told in our liturgy that Rosh Hashanah is a celebration of the world's creation, beginnings, potential, possibilities, life itself. And on Yom Kippur, we speak of that day. We speak of Yom Kippur Day as if it were the day before our last. On Yom Kippur, we pause to reflect on relationships and on memory and the legacy that will be our life. On Rosh Hashanah, this day and tomorrow and the day after is the first day of the rest of our lives, and it is for each of us to determine how we shall invest and prioritize and spend the time we are afforded. This is the message of Rosh Hashanah. And in a sermon that Rabbi Henry and I have co-written, we will explore that theme of possibility and potential and what we will do with our lives tomorrow morning. And on Yom Kippur, when again Rabbi Henry and I will share a sermon we have written once more in tandem, on Yom Kippur we will take note of the passing of time from a different perspective. For on Yom Kippur, abstaining from food and drink, eschewing sexual relations, avoiding overt displays of pomp, and standing before an open ark reminiscent of an open and empty coffin, on Yom Kippur, it is as if we are rehearsing for our own death, our own final passage. We are told to consider Yom Kippur as if it is the last day of our lives, as if we are one day before our own death. Bifocalism. On Rosh Hashanah, we speak of our lives as unfolding before us, and on Yom Kippur, the images of our lives drawing to their inevitable terminus. And of course, both perspectives, as if seen through bifocals, are correct. In this same vein, in his new book, The Road to Character, New York Times columnist David Brooks posits that there are two sets of virtues. He describes what he calls resume virtues and eulogy virtues. <laughs> resume virtues are those sets of experiences and accomplishments that reflect on our life's work, perhaps our work-based activities. Resume virtues are the skills and talents we acquire for personal and professional achievement. And eulogy virtues, Eulogy virtues, in contrast, are the individual qualities or personal achievements that are talked about at our funeral. The love, the laughter, the legacy of our lives. Two truths approach one another, writes Swedish poet, Nobel laureate, Thomas Tranströmer. Two truths approach each other. One comes from within and one comes from without. And where they meet, you have the chance to catch a look at yourself. Bifocalism, the ability to recognize the truth at one and the same time of complementary perspectives, and therein we might just catch a look at ourselves. After, our, after all, our lives do lay in front of us, full of infinite possibilities. And two, as we age, we draw closer to the day when time will be for us no more. This is the central theme of the High Holy Days, confronting the middle of life, 
the moment we are in the midst of what poet, Polish poet Wisława Zimborska recalls, this very passing moment that has passed, and then discovering and giving to that moment, this moment, this day and the next, giving to each moment of our lives full as they are with minutia, giving of our lives their meaning. That is our life's work. Aging, it's not for sissies, but if James Taylor is correct, and the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time, permit me to suggest that the sacred of life is filling our days with meaning. Our lives begin this day, Rosh Hashanah comes to remind us. And so tomorrow we shall speak of what we might do with the time that is ours. On Rosh Hashanah we shall consider our resume virtues. For on Rosh Hashanah it is as if we are applying for a job. The job of being you. The job of being me. The job that each of us is respectively alone qualified to fulfill. And two, we are moving steadily towards our last day. And so in this season, let us also take stock of Yom Kippur's message. Repent, return, reconcile, and reflect upon your life as if you have but one more day to live. Bifocals in place, we are aging, but we're here and our task, Judaism instructs, is over these next 10 days and in the year ahead, our task as we live in the midst of our lives, as we enjoy the middle of our life, our task is to find and to bring to our days its meaning. Time is short. The years pass. Let us waste not another moment. Amen. Shunatova. <laughs>